Hello and welcome to Voice of the Covenant Bible Study. You know, all this month we've been learning about divine prosperity. I hope you've been joining me on all of the lessons. And these lessons will give you a foundation, but it's important that you continue to meditate on the scriptures that we post on the screens. Maybe you have them in your Bible. Go ahead and underline them and go back and reread them when we're through with our study together. And before we begin today's lessons, though, I want to thank our wonderful ministry partners for their faithful support. Thank you for your prayers and your precious financial seeds that you sow into the good soil of Jesse Duplantis Ministries. Together, we are reaching people and changing lives one soul at a time. And if you're watching today and you'd like to become a partner and be a part of this great vision that God has called us to accomplish, you know, we've been in the ministry since 1976, and it's been 70, I think, 46 years now. We've been, we've been going and bl blowing and going and doing everything that God has called us to do. And so many millions of people have been reached and impacted over the years, but we're continuing to do that. We have a lot ahead that God wants us to accomplish, and you can be a part of that if you decide to be a partner. And you could pray about that and use the instructions that's on the screen. You can use JDM, PayPal, uh, JDM.org, PayPal, or text to give or mail in your donation, whatever is convenient for you. And that's so good. But before we continue on, let's pray and invite the Holy Spirit to help us as we study the Word of God together. Father, I'm so thankful for your Word and for all those that are studying along with us. With me today, Lord, no matter where we are in the world, you're right there with us. Lord, we trust your Holy Spirit. We invite the Holy Spirit to be with us as we learn and study and your word and, and learn new things about what you have for us as believers. Lord, open our understanding and unite us as make us one, Lord, in your, in your word. Lord, I thank you that we have great promises, and that you're opening our hearts and our minds to understand it, and not just understand it, but walk it out and apply it in our lives and see the results. Lord, I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I want to conclude our study today on divine prosperity by encouraging you to take the path toward the good life. It's enough, you know, a lot of people hear about it. But we have to make a decision to take a step on the path that God has for each one of us. And we're going to start studying about that by look, looking at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. So go ahead and turn there in your Bible. You know, most people will agree that God wants them to be a good person or do good works, but many of those same people haven't realized that God wants them to live a good life as well. The truth is that God has created all of us with that in mind. You know, if you're a parent, you understand that. You want your child to prosper and be blessed. Well, we serve a good heavenly father who wants that even more than we want for our own children. We're going to read this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, the Amplified Bible. It says, For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. You know, in South Louisiana, we have an abundance of seafood, and boy, do we know how to make it cook. We know how to make it, it work and smell good. It's just amazing. If you haven't traveled down to South Louisiana, you need to do that. It's all about flavor and spice. And one of my favorite local television commercials years ago that I saw was, which just really explained this so well. It began with a scene of an outdoor picnic table floated with fresh, steaming seafood of every type that you can imagine. They had crawfish up there. They had crabs and boiled shrimp. It was amazing. And uh, I could almost smell the seasoning through the television screen. But just as I began to lick my lips, the camera backed away. And it revealed the back of a large man that was also looking at this table and uh, ex examining the good of the land, basically. And just then the man turned around and he looked straight at, at the lens and I, it was like he was looking straight at me and his, eye gla his glasses that he had in were all fogged in because it was the steam from the, from the seafood. And he looked at had this huge grin and he said, life is good. I'll never forget that because it's so true. Life is good. And even if you don't like seafood, you know that man was talking about abundance. And we're going to turn to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19, and, and see that in the scripture. You know, throughout the Bible study this month, we've learned that abundance has always been God's will for his children. Let's read that right now in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. It says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Now, that's the quality of life that God offers to each of us today. 
And I believe that when God promised that we would eat the good of the land, he wasn't just talking about a full belly. He was talking about a full life, one that is filled with joy, peace, love, and every good thing that heaven has to offer. And I want you to help you today to discover how to take the path to that good life that God has for you called divine prosperity. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 3, verse, we're going to look at verse 6 in a minute. And you're going to see that being thankful is the first step in the path to the good life that God has for you. You know, although your life may be anything but good at this moment, you can be thankful that Jesus came to change all of that. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6 in the King James Bible says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. You see, once you acknowledge that he came to lead you out of a life of despair and into the good life, it won't be long before he will show you his path for your life. We're going to see this also in Psalm 16, verse 11. Let's turn there. Because God's word can lead you out of lack and into abundance in every area of your life. Psalm 16, verse 11 in the King James says, Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Think about that. God has good things that he has prearranged for you to walk in. And if there seems to be a wall between you and the good life, settle the fact once and for all that God is not holding out on you. The problem is never with God. Let's see this in Psalms 84 verse 11. We're going to establish the fact in your heart that God is always looking to do you good. Read Psalms 84, 11 in the King James Version says, For the Lord God is a sun and, a sh a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. This is so powerful, such a powerful passage of Scripture. And it leads us to that second step along the path toward the good life, which is to walk uprightly. This simply means just to walk in integrity and in truth. And God wants us to do the right thing. Look, look at Matthew chapter 6. We're going to read verse 33, the words of Jesus. You know, when you're determined to always do what is right and always do it right, the byproduct of that is the good life. And these are the words of Jesus. We're going to read Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 in the Amplified Bible. It says, But seek, aim at, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. And then all these things taken together will be given you besides. You see, Jesus had spoken these words after he had talked to the people about how, you know, don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what's going to wear, all these kinds of things. He's compared it to the birds of the air, how they have what they need. God will supply them. And you're much greater than the birds or the flowers on the earth. So he says, seek first, not second, third, but seek God first. And when you do that, he says, all these other things that you need in life will be added to you. That's that pathway. You see, when your life is focused on God's way of doing things and walking uprightly, Jesus promised that you would have all that you need to eat, drink, and wear. However, these life essentials is just the beginning of the good life that God has in mind for you. Your future can be great. You can have hope for a, a better life for yourself and for your family. You were created by God, and through Christ Jesus, you can have and live a good life. Although you may not be walking in every facet of the good life that, that we're talking about right now, it's available to every believer, including you. And the third step on this path that will lead you into this good life must begin with a seed. That's so true. And once your heart has been changed and things don't control you, you need to recognize that God's plan to move you out of lack will always begin with a seed. If you want to reap, you must sow. The good news is that God will provide seed to the sower. The Word of God teaches us this. I'm not going to go into all those details. That was, that's so true, though. You'll find it out as you study more. But once you thankfully offer back to God what is rightfully His, 
you are actually investing in your own prosperity future. Let's turn to Galatians chapter 6. We're going to look at verse 6. See, God is able to put his kingdom principle of sowing and reaping to work for you. But it's your responsibility. You have to be obedient. And when you're obedient to God, it will result in the blessing. Galatians chapter 6, we're going to read verse 6 through 10 in the King James Bible. It says, Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall, shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who, of, who are of the household of faith. That word communicate, which we read in verse 6, where we said, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. That word communicate translate, contribute, translates contribute in the Amplified Bible. And Paul was teaching them the principle that reaping is always the result of sowing into good soil. They contributed to him. He, they were his partners. And because they were his partners, he wanted them to know that if they, if they sowed their seed, they could receive a harvest. Now let's look at Philippians chapter four, excuse me, chapter one, and we're gonna look at verse four. This truth is reinforced in this book of Philippians. It's also written by the apostle Paul. Verse four through six says, and this is the King James version of the Bible. It says, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That the Amplified Bible, classic edition, translates that word fellowship in verse five to mean your sympathetic cooperation and contributions and partnerships. Partnership. You see, the people of the church at Philippi were faithful partners to the Apostle Paul. They had been instrumental in advancing the gospel, and Paul wanted them to know that they were destined for the good life. Let's turn to Philippians chapter 4, verse 15. In this last scripture of our study today, I want us to look at what Paul taught his partners about giving and receiving. Philippians chapter 4, verse 15 through 19 in the King James Bible reads, it says, Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica you sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Ephroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable and well-pleasing to God. Verse 19, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You see, Paul wanted them to understand the principle. If you give, you shall receive. They could expect God to supply all of their needs. And you could expect an immediate overflow of harvest on every faith-filled seed that you sow. It's a vital part of his covenant promise to his children, and it will come to pass. Realize today that God has empowered you to prosper spiritually, physically, and financially. This is the kind of life that Jesus came to give to you and to me, and it is good. It's the life that you were created to enjoy. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed the study that we've had on divine prosperity. And I thank you for joining me today on Voice of the Covenant Bible Study. And I pray that it has gotten deep into your heart and it's transformed the way you think to realize that God's blessing belongs to you today. And I hope you'll join me next week right here for another teaching on the Word of God. But before we go, let's close in prayer. Father, I'm so thankful for every person that's been joining with me in this study. Lord, I pray that, that they've received and learned some things about your Word and that their life has been transformed because of it. Lord, I thank you that your Word contains every promise that we could ever need to prosper in this life. 
Bless them today in everything they set their hand to do, Lord, as they're obedient to you, that they'll, they'll learn how to walk out the good plan that you have for their life, to prosper, that everything they set their hand to do will prosper, that they'll be the head and not the tail. They'll be above and not beneath. They'll be blessed going in and blessed going out. Lord, they're too blessed to be stressed, that they'll see answers in the Word of God that belong to them today, and that they'll be be a reflection of the good God that you are in the earth today. I share blessing on them today in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. See you next week. Hello, I'm Jesse the Planners, and I'm reminding you to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell for notifications. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.